So what do you actually need to get started doing voiceover online? Not a whole lot, I'm happy to say. And in this video, I'll break down the three ways that you can get started right now. Welcome to Greybeard VoiceOver, where I want to share with you the tips and tricks that I've learned on my way through this whole voiceover thing and uh, get you started if you're interested as well. If you like the video, like it. If you want to subscribe, that would help me out a lot as well. But before we get into any more calls to action, let's get into the video. <laughs> so first off, uh, the very first thing you need to consider is that you don't need to start with pretty much anything. When I got started, I had a Blue Yeti microphone, a USB mic with no, you know, fancy uh, XLR mixer or nothing. Uh, it was uh, just plugged into my computer and I used a free program to record, which was Audacity. And that was pretty much it. I didn't have any sound treatment in my space at all and it sounded really, really bad. It sounded horrible. The only thing I had going for me was my voice itself, that people wanted to hire me for that sort of fluent, natural voice that I came with. <laughs> uh, and if you have that yourself, then you might be able to get started with just that as well. But the main thing here is you're gonna have to price yourself very low so low that it's gonna really hurt sometimes when you're taking jobs and working a ton for almost no money. That's normal. That's gonna actually build up your reviews and you might feel like, man, like this is kind of a waste of my time. Well, if you feel that way, then that's totally fine. But what it might do is it might build up your career in this and you might actually be able to raise your rates later on. This is a bit of an investment. And if you think of it in that light, then it might actually be worth it to you. As soon as you get some reviews and you start getting a bit of a volume of orders coming your way, you're going to want to increase your quality of sound. And to do that, I've got three really good options for you. Number one is just sound treat your space. If you have a closed in room that you're recording in, buy a bunch of those foam tiles online that you can find on Amazon for like a 60 pack and just plaster them all around your room. You wanna focus on all the walls in front and behind you first, then the sides, get some base traps for the ceiling, get a carpet for the floor, put a bookshelf in there, whatever. Just get some stuff in that room to start soaking up that sound and you'll notice a huge increase in your sound quality. Number two, this is the one that almost everybody starts with if they can, record in a closet. Actually, if you have a walk-in closet or just a regular closet that's big enough for you to fit yourself and a microphone in, put as much clothes in there as possible. They're gonna suck up that sound and uh, that's a really, really good way to start. In fact, I've seen professional voiceover artists recording in closets still to this day. It's so good that they just choose to keep doing it. So it's a totally viable option. And option three is what I did. If you don't have a closet and you don't have a space that's enclosed and you can sound treat, I was in a breakfast nook, okay? <laughs> it was a really bad situation. What I did was I built myself a frame out of some wood that I found at the local hardware store. I built myself just a, a box, basically. I put this box between myself and my desk and I grabbed some moving blankets, two of them, for about 60 bucks, I think, in total. And I threw those over the top of the frame and created myself a little tent with me and my recording setup. And it was amazing, the sort of results I got from just doing that. So it worked, but it is the most annoying thing you can imagine to have to get into this space, hope that you don't knock anything over, and then pull it all down when you're done and store it somewhere. It, it's not good, but hey, it worked for me enough to get me to the point where I could build my own whisper booth and now I don't have to deal with any of that anymore. And I would say that is the next step after this would be to build yourself your own whisper booth. Now there's lots of guides for this online on YouTube. Uh, maybe I'll make a guide someday for myself. I'm kicking myself for not taking footage of it when I did it, but oh well. Beyond that, you can move into a professional recording space. You could buy a whisper booth online for tens of thousands of dollars. There's options, but for now, those first three options are gonna get you started and they are gonna get you a long, long way. Thanks so much for watching Greybeard VoiceOver. I appreciate that you stuck around till the end. If you enjoyed the video, like it. If you want to subscribe, then do that as well and ring the bell just to make sure that it works. We'll see you in the next one. Greybeard, out.